Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 18 of Linux CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be given a hands-on example of compiling the Linux CNC software from source code, including where to get the source code, installing the dependencies, and the options that you have to compile the software. I wish to remind all of you that I'm a home hobbyist and I would like to share my experience using Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC2, as a controller and CNC controlled machines for the home shop. I'm hoping that as I release videos over time that other home hobbyists can use the information to make their own CNC controlled machines. With some luck, perhaps, these videos will remove some of the mystery behind the Linux CNC controller and help some people avoid the issues that I've encountered while learning how to use it. With that out of the way, let's get started. You may be asking yourself, why would you compile the Linux CNC software when you can download a working copy of Linux CNC you know, from its website? Well, that's a fair question. There are a couple of reasons to compile the software yourself that come to mind. You may want to run Linux CNC on a distribution of Linux that differs from what the developers are offering. Or, maybe there's a feature not released yet, but has been completed and you want to use it from the 2.8 version. Or, perhaps you just like the satisfaction of saying, hey, I've done that myself. Whatever your reason for compiling the software yourself, I hope this video gives you a good overview of how it's done and what to expect while doing it. There are two ways to compile Linux CNC. It can be compiled as a real-time software or simulation software. To compile Linux CNC as a simulator only requires nothing very special and it uses the kernel installed on the computer to run it. As a simulator, Linux CNC could be used to verify G-code. To run Linux CNC as a real-time controller, however, requires that the computer have a real-time operating system. If you're interested in this, I've created a series of written tutorial and video of how to compile your own real-time Linux kernel using the preempt RT kernel patch. You can find links to both of these either from my YouTube channel or my website. The URLs for both will be in the description below the video. The setup I'm going to use to demonstrate is an i386 or 32-bit installation of Lubuntu 18.04 LTS. Lubuntu was chosen because of its lightweight desktop and its continued support. 18.04 LTS is the newest available long-term support edition at the time of this recording. The system was installed using only the default selections. Additionally, the system was updated and a real-time preempt RT kernel compiled and installed on the machine. Now, join me as I show you where to get the Linux CNC source code, make the necessary changes to your system, install the build dependencies, and finally compile the Linux CNC software. Hey everybody, uh, first thing I want to do is apologize uh, for the method of recording that I'm doing here. Uh, what I would like to do is actually record on the machine that I have Linux CNC installed on. Um, but what I, I encountered was that when I in, when I tried to install the uh, GTK record my desktop software, um, it it did not play well. So I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, I'm going to uh, use my computer here that I normally generate my videos on uh, to do this recording and uh, to through a through an SSH uh, terminal connection to the Linux CNC machine so that we can actually do everything. Um, and then I'll set up the video camera to um, 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 to point at the um, actual computer that uh, we're, we're doing this install on or compile on um, to show you how everything went. So let me first start out by saying that um, in addition to this video there's a t written tutorial and if you go to my website at myheap.com and then on the menu at the top CNC stuff Linux CNC EMC2 you will land on this page and on this page uh, under written tutorials number three compiling Linux CNC from source code um, if you click that you you will see there's a written tutorial as well and then the PDF icon uh, to the left here if you click that you it will allow you to download a PDF version of uh, of the same document 
So I'm going to use this here um, so that I can do some cutting and pasting and, and speed things up. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal, Control alt t and this is what you would do on uh, the Linux CNC machine. The only difference is, is I'm going to SSH to the machine. So in other words, I'm going to make a remote connection to the machine, enter in my password, and now it's just like I'm on the machine uh, across the room. So you see I'm on LCNC 4HH, so Linux CNC for the home hobbyist machine. Okay. So um, let's get started here. I don't want to um, blather too much. So there are um, a few things that um, we'll have to do to uh, get the uh, uh, computer ready and um, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll, we'll pause this right here let me set the video camera up uh, to the machine and I'll show you what we got to do there and then we'll come back over here so I'll catch you here in just a second okay so I have the video camera set up on my test Linux CNC machine and again uh, just to remind you this is uh, Lubuntu 1804 Lubuntu was chosen because of uh, its very lightweight desktop uh, the 1804 is the newest long-term release. The kernel that I have installed on here is actually a 5.0 real real-time kernel. I think in my um, I think in my kernel tutorial, I think I've done a 4.19 version of the kernel. I thought I would try the uh, newest edition or newest version of the kernel and see what happens, right? But in order to uh, compile Linux CNC. We need to uh, we need to do a couple things to the machine. Uh, one of them's important; the other one's just ancillary. So what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to hit Start, System Tools, Synaptic Package Manager, and then of course you know it's going to ask for the password because you know we're potentially making changes to the system. Okay, uh, I don't really need to see that. So we're going to hit on Settings and Repositories. Okay. Because we're compiling software, sometimes we need the source code and stuff. So we're going to check the source code uh, box if it's not checked. Okay, and uh, that allows us when we pull software to be able to pull, pull source code that we need for some dev files and things like that. And finally, up here on the updates tab, we're going to click that, and where it says notify me of a new Ubuntu version, we're going to say never. So it, you know your options are for any new version, for any long-term uh, support release, and never. The reason why we want that set to never is because if we were to actually upgrade, let's say, to version uh, 1810 or something, uh, our kernel, uh, our real-time system would just, it would be erased and we would have to start over. So that's why we tell it never. So we're going to hit close here, and then um, if you actually made changes, it's going to say, hey, um, you'll need to do updates or whatever okay so at this point we're going to um, um, update the system I'll go ahead and do it from here hit control T and uh, we're just gonna hit sudo right uh, app oops might help me type it right apt update that will update the software repositories, including the sources that we just added. Okay, and then we're, we'll do a distribution update. Okay, and our upgrade. So when you do a distribution uh, dist uh, upgrade, what that does is it uh, it upgrades all the software, but it also takes care of any uh, dependency uh, issues that you might have. Um, that you might have uh, be associated with the new software. So disk upgrade. Hit enter. Oh. See there, it might help if I spell it right. I'm kind of reaching around the camera, so it's a little awkward for me. All right, so it tells me that I have nothing. So uh, once that's done, you know we have the, the system um, thoroughly upgraded and ready to go and um, we can we can carry on with the uh, installation. So as rather than uh, watching um, this here through the camera, I'm going to go back to the uh, SSH environment so that we can get a screencast and it's a little easier to see. And we'll go from there. So I'll uh, catch you here in just a second. 
Okay, so we're back over here on my video machine, and we're, we're and we have this SSH um, shell open to um, to the Linux CNC machine. Sorry, so we've uh, we we've set up the preliminary uh, things that we need to do uh, to the uh, initial install. You know, turn on the sources, and um, you know, install uh, the the disk upgrade. And, and that sort of thing so we're ready to go so this is just as if I were still in that terminal uh, over on on that computer and again I want to apologize I know this is a little bit of a convoluted way to show it but um, I have to do what I have to do I guess to make this work alright so at this point um, we need to uh, we need to decide, you know, are we building a Linux CNC for simulation? Are we building it for um, uh, real time or whatever? Now, uh, on this machine, if I if I do an LS, you see that there's that RT kernel. Um, remember that was from the uh, previous exercise. I've built the kernel so that I I have the uh, the compiling software that I I already need but now if you're gonna if you don't um, you'll need to install the build essentials right so it's sudo apt install uh, build essential right and uh, it will ask for your password and then if it needs to be installed you can install it you see we already have it simply because we've already built the kernel uh, the kernel so um, we're going to start this adventure by getting the Linux CNC source code. Okay, now the uh, Linux CNC, I'm going to open a browser here, is hosted on github.com, right? Linux CNC. And it's the Linux CNC project, okay? And so what we could do here is we could select the branch that we wanted and you see there are lots and lots of different branches of the software where 2.7 branch is the main uh, supported branch and master is the development branch. And we can say, hey, clone or download the file here, you know, download the zip. So we could do it that way, but that's not a great way to do it. So we're going to do this a little different. So in our terminal, we're going to uh, use a program called Git. Now, Git is used uh, as a software used to manage changes in files, right? So the software developers they use Git to uh, uh, update, uh, upload, and update different sections of the file. They can branch out and make decisions based on this or that. Have their stable release, branch that out, and then continue on with um, um, you know new features and things like that. So, um, like I said, the program we're going to use is called Git, so we'll need to install that. So we're going to sudo apt install, and the program is called Git. Okay, and we're going to hit yes here. It'll take just a minute to install. Okay, so Git is installed, and we can use the software to, uh, to download all of the source code from uh, GitHub for the Linux CNC project. So to do that, we're going to type git. That's the software we're using, right? The what we want to do is clone, or in other words, get a, a entire copy of everything, and then where we get it from, it's git colon slash slash github dot com slash Linux CNC slash Linux CNC dot git. That's the uh, that tells Git where we're getting it from, and then we need to tell it where do you want to, where do you want to put it. Well, we're going to put it in a folder called Linux CNC dash dev. Hit enter. So Git will go out to GitHub and grab the entire project and pull this down to our computer. Okay. So while it's doing that, let me let me talk about uh, Linux CNC. Now, you kind of sort of got a brief glimpse on. Uh, on uh, the website there that there are a lot of different branches and stuff and what does that mean well um, think of think of uh, these 
software repository is something like a tree and a branch is where it comes off of the tree and the master is like the main trunk of the tree so uh, the way I understand it is the developers for Linux CNC they they write code uh, make bug fixes and uh, new features and those are in the master okay and then when they reach a certain point that they feel like that version is stable enough they will uh, create a branch with that version name so we have um, the 2.7 version of Linux CNC which is currently stable and then there's the 2.8 pre-release or the you know the master branch where they're still adding features and making bug fixes getting ready for another release so we have to decide you know what is it that we're really wanting to compile here so are you looking to just compile the you know 2.7 stable release or is there maybe there's a feature in the um, in the master branch the 2.8 uh, pre-release that you want uh, for instance I think 2.8 has some features for joints uh, homing multi uh, joints uh, like for gantry machines that 2.7 doesn't have so there there'd be reasons okay but really it's kind of up to you um, to decide which one that you want so say for example that I wanted the 2.7 we need to tell Git that we want to use that 2.7 version of Linux CNC so we would use Git right check out right because I just want to check it out 2.7 because that's the name of the branch okay oh sorry about that let me do a list here so you see we have a folder called Linux CNC dash dev that's where Git um, copied our files to and we have to be working in that directory for Git to understand what we're talking about so let me let me change to Linux CNC dot dev and then let's try this again Git check out right because we that's the branch we want check out 2.7 right so git will go up there and says okay hey I'm set up to track remote 2.7 from the origin and uh, we have switched to it so anything that we would do from this point on we would be building a, a version 2.7 of Linux CNC if you changed your mind for some reason and you want the 2.8 pre version we just tell Git to check that out. So Git check out. Okay. Now you think it would be like 2.8 pre one, right? Because that's the name of the software, but it actually resides in the branch that's called Master. Okay. So we say Git check out Master. Okay. And it tells us that we've checked out the Master branch. So Master will always be the newest and latest and greatest. Uh, version of Linux CNC but remember it's not considered stable there can be bugs and you know you might have to work through things so if you're going to build something that you actually want to run a machine on unless there's specifically a feature of like 2.8 that you need or you want to use it may be better to do the 2.7 branch so that's what I want to do so I want to say git check out right because I remember I've, I've switched back to master room switch back to 2.7 okay so it tells me so now the other thing uh, that we want to do is we always want to make sure before we start compiling that we have the newest version of the software right because the sometimes it's pretty actively developed and if save a couple days have passed since we've uh, cloned the repository we want to make sure that we have everything up to date so while we're switched in the branch right we're going to say git pull and get pull uh, pulls any uh, changes that may have been added to the source code and merges those with the code that we already have on our computer and of course R says it's already up to date but then again we just pulled the or we just cloned the repository so anytime that uh, you're away for a few days and you're going to compile or something like that uh, make sure that you check out the branch that you want to compile and then do a git pull um, so that um, so that uh, you have the most current software so that's the first really the first decision you gotta make what version of Linux CNC am I gonna compile okay we know how to get the source code and we know how to check out the branch that we want and we know how to update the branch okay so now that we've done that we need to uh, talk about um, 
dependencies. Now you remember if you were uh, watching the uh, kernel compile that uh, software requires certain uh, dependencies, right? And there, there are easy ways and hard ways to do that. But um, fortunately, the the uh, developers for Linux CNC have uh, uh, some configure uh, scripts that will tell us what we need to install on the computer to, in order to be able to compile it. But in order to do that, we have to install a little bit more software. So we're going to sudo apt install and the software that we want to install is called dev scripts. Dev scripts is used to build uh, Debian packages. Okay, uh, We want uh, dpackage dash dev okay it has software that we're going to use uh, to um, find dependence and then we need the Python software so I'm going to hit enter here and we're going to install this here and this will take a minute and then when it's done I'll come back okay so we have the uh, the, the software installed that we need to to determine what dependencies that uh, we need to in, um, to compile Linux CNC so I'm going to do a list here and we see that there's a folder called Debian right now Linux C, uh, Linux CNC um, has traditionally been run on like Debian Wheezy and, and some Ubuntu uh, releases and and uh, Lubuntu is a is a Debian variant so this works out quite well for us so we're going to change directory um, by using the CD command to Debian and then inside uh, this folder if I do a list here we see that there's a configure script right now this configure script uh, tells how we want uh, how we need to configure for Debian right and we only need to pass it one command so we're gonna run configure and then to that configure strip we're gonna pass uspace now uspace is, uh, is the command saying hey that we're gonna either do a real-time or a simulator and uh, we're going to do the real-time with uh, the preempt RT real-time kernel patch so in our case this works now there are other um, things that you can pass to it but this is all we need to worry about for our services or for our purposes so when it runs um, it creates some files right but then it informs us that it's successfully configured uspace for Ubuntu 18.04 now we we're running Lubuntu, but remember it's all Ubuntu. It's just a different version. What makes it Lubuntu is the lightweight desktop that we're using. So now that we have um, now that we've run that and it's it's created uh, some control files, we just want to back up back to our Linux CNC dash dev folder and I've done that by doing a cd dot dot. If you're not familiar with that nomenclature, the dot dot means change directory to the parent of this directory right so we're just moving up a directory so now we want to run the program called dpackage dash check build depths right this program will then go in and look at the control file and look at the system and determine what software needs to be installed on the computer to successfully compile Linux CNC so when I hit enter here, we say we, we get the error put and says, okay, well we have an error. We have unmet build dependencies, right? This is software that we need to install uh, that is not installed uh, in order to successfully compile. So this makes things really easy for us, and, and I'm grateful that the uh, developers uh, maintain this. So we see that we need dead dev helper uh, greater than or equal to version six. We need live udev, right? And we can install having this list. We could um, we can install these sudo right apt install right, and we can put these in here like dev helper right and uh, live u dev um, dash dev so we can put these uh, files in here and install them you know one at a time or, or or we can do multiple files at a time by putting a space between the files that we want to install and then you know we can install some and then we can come back and we could run d package check, uh, check uh, build depths again and any ones that we're missing until eventually that we get um, 
all the software that we needed, uh, the, the build dependencies installed um, till we got that done. So um, what I've discovered is that depending if you're building uh, the U space, and we'll talk about this in a minute, the, the U space or the or the Debian um, installer files for Linux CNC, whether if you're including the um, building the documentation or whatever that these dependencies can change so what I've done to try to make things a little easier on everybody if you go to the written tutorial and scroll down right we're installing the required dependencies we see a list of dependencies here and I'm just going to highlight all of that and press control C to copy and then go back to my terminal right and I'm going to press control shift V okay so what I've done is that uh, I've com I've put together all the dependencies that I could figure out that is needed to cover whatever scenario we're going to do whether if we're going to do U space for 2.7 or 2.8 or Debian packages or whatever and uh, so what I've done is you'll see that we got sudo app install and we got the files and then you see these slashes here at the end that just means that we're telling the computer that there's more information we want to type in we're going to continue on the next line don't run it until I you know when I press enter so I have all the packages here I'm going to hit enter and it says okay hey there's we're going to have, need to get 552 meg of archives uh, after this operation yada 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 do you want to install this well obviously we have to install it in order to um, compile the software so I'm gonna hit yes and hit enter now this is gonna take a little while depending on your internet connection the speed of the computer it will take a while so when this is done I'll come back and we'll continue okay so that takes a little bit of time <clears throat> alright so just to recap to this point we made some modifications to the uh, system uh, repositories right we, we told it that we wanted the source code and we said never uh, prompt us for an uh, an upgrade to the system you know a version upgrade we've um, got the uh, installed the git software to download uh, Linux CNC source code we've selected what version of Linux CNC that we want to compile we've went through to determine the build dependencies that was required to build the software and now we've just finished installing those build dependencies and that took a little while so now at this point we, we have another decision to make do we want to compile Linux CNC as U space or do we want to compile it as Debian packages okay there's uh, pros and cons to both right the U space uh, is kinda considered it's the run in place environment and that's kinda considered the developer friendly way to run Linux CNC because developers will compile um, different pieces of the software uh, maybe many times in testing and they don't want to have to install and uninstall from the operating system so they they run in what's called the run in place environment and then the other option is uh, you know the the user friendly right if you've installed Linux CNC let's say on the from the Debian Wheezy uh, live ISO you know there's a menu entry showing um, you know the CNC entry and it shows the you know the documentation and Linux CNC software and the latency test and etc um, you know that that's that's the user friendly way so we need to, to decide um, how are we going to compile it and I'm actually going to cover both okay so the f um, the first way that I'm going to uh, cover is the rip or run in place environment okay now uh, to do this um, the first thing we want to do is we want to move to the source code um, folder right and under Linux CNC dash dev you know in, in our source code and we want to run a file called autogen dot sh now autogen um, shell script generates the configure file for Linux CNC so we're gonna we'll hit enter here and it seems like nothing happens but if we list we'll see now that there's a configure script where if we would have listed before we that script wouldn't be there so that's the purpose of autogen to generate the configure script 
So now we want to actually run configure. Okay. Now configure takes there's a pile of options that you can pass to configure. Okay, but there's really only two options that we're going to be interested in. Okay, the first one is um, called dash dash with real time um, uh, with real time. Okay, and what we're saying is okay. Hey, we want to compile with real time support. Okay, and you also need to use this even if you're going to compile a simulator, right? And uh, so here's where we would be able to specify if we're using like RTAI kernel patches, preempt RT kernel patches, or Zenimai, right? Now I, I know very little about Zenimai, so we're not going to mess with that, and we're not going to mess with RTAI. Uh, we've we've been dealing with the um, preempt RT patch, right? So we're going to say U space, okay. So with real time equals U space, and what that tells the the configure script is that we're either compiling it for a real if there's a real time kernel, right? Like that, like the preempt RT patch uh, will compile a real time version of Linux. Otherwise, if there's a normal vanilla kernel without real time, we're going to compile a simulator, right? So the the option actually works for both, right? So with real time equals U space, we that's an option that we have to put there. Now the next one is um, really kind of personal preference. Okay, we're building the RIP environment. Uh, the, we have to ask ourselves, well, do we want it to build um, the documentation that belongs with Linux CNC or do we know enough of it we don't want it or we're going to go out and look on the internet or whatever uh, for the documentation it's entirely up to you but for completeness I'm going to go ahead and we're going to build the documentation that comes with Linux CNC so that flag is called uh, it's dash dash enable right dash build dash documentation okay so we're going to enable the build documentation. So that's all we really have to do with configure. Now configure will take and look at the system and if there's uh, anything that you missed um, during the uh, uh, you know installing the build dependencies if you get an error that's the error that you're probably going to see where it says hey um, I got an error you're going to need such and such um, software installed but if you copied and pasted from the um, from the tutorial you shouldn't get any messages here as a matter of fact when it's done we should be presented with a uh, a big box uh, kind of an ASCII text box saying hey yeah you've got it all configured you can make it now and there it is so this box simply says hey w tells you what Linux CNC is right and uh, it seems like it configured successfully so we're looking good Okay, and uh, so now we just need to make it. And uh, to make the software, um, we run the command make. Okay, and then we hit enter, and it will make all of the software. Pretty simple, right? So before we hit make, the one thing I do want to mention is that uh, you know newer computers have multiple processor cores or multiple processors, and uh, when you compile software, if you just hit make it will use a single processor okay but actually make can use multiple processors right so if we type the command n proc right and hit enter it will tell you how many processors the computer has so here you see the computer that we're <clears throat> on has as a dual core processor so we can use up to two processors to compile so if we type make and then use the J flag. The J flag tells make I want to I want you to use this number of cores, right? So we could say one if we just wanted to use a single core. Or in our case, we have two. We could say hey, use both cores. And let's say you had four processors. You could say three or even four or whatever. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and tell it to use both processor cores. It will speed it up a little bit, maybe not a lot because I'm running dinosaur uh, hardware here, but you get the idea. So I'm going to hit enter here and then it's going to start the compile. Now the compile will take some time, okay? Um, not only to compile the Linux CNC software, but the documentation that comes with it. 
So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause here and I'll come back in when it's done and uh, we'll finish up this portion of the uh, compile uh, for uh, the real time or for the run in place environment. So I'll see you here in a little bit. Okay, now that the compile's done, we only have one last thing to do before we can start using the software that you know that we compiled. So Linux CNC, when it runs, uh, it needs to access uh, the hardware, right? You know, to to run the steppers, the parallel port, or or whatever. And and uh, in order to do that, <clears throat> we have to um, change uh, the software a little bit so that it has actually has permissions to do that. So the last thing that we need to do to finish up here is we need to run sudo make and then set UID. So it's set to user ID. So what that does, it um, goes in and it and changes uh, the owner to root for uh, a portion of the software and changes the sticky bit so that when that software launches other software it has root access and really that's it and um, the only other thing that uh, I want to mention here is I want to back up a directory now that it's uh, we've compiled everything Linux CNC is there and if we have uh, like the docs folder if we change to docs and do a list we see there are several PDFs. You know, there's the developer manual, the documentation, and French, and the manuals in French, and and whatever. It, it's all created there for you because we use that enable build documentation. So I'm going to go back, and then we're going to list again. So when you build a uh, space or the run in place environment or the rip environment, before you can actually use CNC. Uh, use uh, Linux CNC. We have to uh, we have to uh, create the environment for it, right? So, the uh, if we go into the scripts directory, we see that listed right up here, right? We're going to cd scripts, and we'll list. We'll see that there's a, a file called uh, rip environment, right? Right here, okay. And so what we want to do is we want to uh, this file contains all the information, the paths and and variables and everything set up so that Linux CNC could be run. And we have to source that. And what that means is that we're taking the contents of that run in place environment, you know, the the paths, uh, the variables and whatnot, and we're adding it currently to the computer's environment so that it knows what is what. So and it's simple as going source dot slash rip environment and that's it now you can run Linux CNC so um, I will uh, uh, set the camera back up and we'll go over to the computer and, and we'll re reiterate this a little bit but remember when you're compiling for uspace this is kinda like the developers version or the or, or version of Linux CNC that because you know they might do multiple compiles or or compile multiple versions of Linux CNC to test things out and as a user it's a little less intuitive but again we're gonna we're gonna cover the Debian compile of it and and uh, and go from there so I'm gonna set up the camera and uh, let's uh, let's let's take a look and see what things look like for us so I'll catch you there in just a minute okay so I'm back over at the Linux CNC computer and uh, we've just compiled for uspace so if I open up the file browser here Remember, we have that Linux CNC dot or dash dev folder, and then you know we have you know there's the docs folder, okay, and we see the documentation. You know we could uh, we can uh, uh, launch any one of these and, and read them. You know, so all, all that is all that's good, okay. Now remember, um, being in the run in place or the rip environment, you always, every time you log into the computer, you will have to source that file. Okay? So I'm going to open up a terminal, right? And I'm going to say source. Oops. And the file I want to source is, I'm going to start from my home folder. That's that tilde, right? Um, Linux CNC dev scripts. Rip, oops, rip environment. That sets everything. So now, if I type Linux CNC, it knows where to find it. Tells me it's running two seven, and see we we run it up over here. So and then we can say, hey, run the axis. We're at two seven fourteen. 
and we can run it. We can pass the config file to it or whatever. So I mean, you know, you could uh, you can run uh, by doing the rip environment. You could actually compile both the 2.7 and the 2.8 if you wanted to, and 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 experiment. And so it's it gives you a lot of latitude, right, of things that you could do. The big thing to remember is that uh, every time you log into the computer, you do have to source the rip environment uh, file so that it knows where to find things. So out of curiosity, um, yeah, I do want to close Linux CNC. Let's uh, do a let's uh, change, and hopefully you can see this. Let me um, let me make the text here just a little bit bigger. Let's. Uh, Okay, so make that text a little bit bigger so maybe you can see it. And uh, we're going to change directory to, remember it's Linux CNC dev and scripts folder. I'm going to go there and let's do a list. Okay, and here we see um, some of the programs that we're familiar with, like latency test, right? So let's run latency test. Might help if I spell it right. I'm reaching around the camera, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, kind of, kind of hard for me to type, and th that's just me whining. So anyway, so we run the latency test, and we can see how our real-time system works, right? So I mean, we compiled and installed a real-time kernel. We run the latency test. We'll work the computer and see how things uh, tax the system, or if it taxes it at all. So anyway, you get the idea. That's that's the uh, run in place or the the use space or the rip environment. Um, but now, if you're a regular user and you're used to seeing the CNC um, menu entry, it's not here. We have to do things from over here. So, to the user friendly version, remember I told you was um, compiling uh, uh, the deb packages. So let's go back um, to the terminal on the other machine. And uh, let's uh, let's let's create and compile the um, 2.7 Debian packages. Then we'll come back over this machine. I'll show you how to install them, and and all should be right in the world. So I'll catch you over there. Okay. So what about compiling the deb packages? What do we have to do different? Okay. So if we back up, right? We and kind of reiterate from the beginning. You know, we made some changes to the system so that we can get the source repositories. We installed Git, right, so that we can download the source code to Linux CNC. We installed um, the, uh, we decided what version that we wanted to compile, whether if it was the master branch or the 2.7 branch. And uh, we updated the Git repositories. And then, you know, we installed some software so that we can get the dependencies. And if you remember, we were in the Debian folder, right? And we ran configure use space. And remember that configured use space and use space for this was saying, hey, we're gonna we're going to uh, either use a real-time kernel or a simulated um, Linux CNC compile if we don't have a real-time kernel and. Um, then after we done that, you know, we went back a directory, and then we run the dpackage. Uh, I think it was check build depths, right? And here you see it returns nothing, but before, you know, it turned everything. Uh, it returned uh, all the software packages that we had to install install in order to compile Linux CNC. Okay, and then at that point we said, okay, are we going to compile for use space or the dev packages? And we walked through how to compile um, for you know the the run in place or the use space environment, the rip environment. Okay, for lack of a better better word. And of course it compiled, and we had to set a user ID. ID, and then of course we have to s uh, source the rip environment in order to run. So now we're interested in uh, building the dev packages. How 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 do we do that? Okay. Well, while we're still in the Linux CNC dash dev folder here, okay, um, we ran the dpackage check build devs. Uh, we installed all the software. So now the only thing we have to do is we run a 
program called dbuild. Okay, dbuild um, builds Debian packages, and it remember we went through and we into the Debian folder to configure the use space and it sets all that up for us and we're just going to pass it a couple flags I'm not not going to go into what these flags mean because uh, just know that you need to pass them there and hit enter and then the system will start building compiling the software and building the Debian packages okay so when this is done I'll uh, go back over and set the camera back up to the other machine and uh, we'll look at uh, where those packages are, are written to and we'll go on how to install them and, and from that. And then uh, so when this is done I'll see you over there in just a minute. Okay when the compile is finished for the um, Debian install files if you go to your home folder you'll see a number of .dev files so let me uh, change the view here so that uh, we can see a detailed listing. So what we see here is uh, we see a Linux CNC U space dev file right now mine say i386 because I compiled them as 32-bit files and then uh, we see the docs right um, let me see if I can sort these a little better okay we see the uh, English Spanish and French documents uh, we see the U space dev and then we uh, see the use space with the debug symbols right and then the dev files so to install Linux CNC all we really have to do is double click on one of these files and allow the system to install it so the uh, debug symbols you won't need if you're using it and the dev files here you won't you won't need either of these so really what we're interested in is the Linux U space 27 right 2714 and whatever documentation. So I'm going to start with Linux CNC U space 2.7.14. Double click that. And we'll see that the package installer then picks that up and it says, okay, what do, what do you want to do? Well, I want to install the package. Okay. Also note that it says it requires the installation of 52 packages. So if there are software dependencies that the Debian file needs, uh, installing it in this manner will install the uh, dependent packages. Now because we're making changes to the software or to the computer we have to uh, enter in our password and the package installer will come up and we'll see it making its progress. So it could take a little bit depending on how much uh, software needs to be installed and and uh, uh, how fast the computer is and and uh, I will fast forward through this a bit here and just you know and will continue. Okay, after it installed the dependent files, it will go ahead and install the Linux CNC U space package. Okay, now that uh, it's installed, uh, let you know that the installation finished. We can hit close, and here we see that the package is installed, and we can close down the uh, package installer. Now, if we come over to our menu, we'll see in this case it says other okay and you'll see that the software is installed in the menu so let's go ahead and get the uh, documentation to install it so Linux CNC doc English is what I want I'll double click it and again it will bring it up with the package installer it reads it see if there's any uh, dependencies or whatever and then we can install the package we're making changes to the system because like always we have to include our password and it goes through and installs the uh, the documentation okay so it lets us know that the uh, Linux CNC doc English has been installed we can hit close that and we can close here and if we come back down to our menu we'll see there's the CNC menu and then of course there's documentation we can run it like normal and browse through it and read it or whatever. Uh, we can launch the uh, latency test. We can see how our computer uh, will work. I mean the whole idea behind here of, com of uh, building your own kernel and compiling Linux CNC ultimately you're gonna have to run the latency test to see if your computer combination and stuff is gonna work for what you want it to work. Now keep in mind that uh, preempt RT kernel 
uh, doesn't have as good of a latency as the RTAI, uh, which could impact software stepping, like stepper motors through the parallel port, but it's less important if you're using uh, like one of the Mesa cards that has hardware stepping. And of course, you know, after you get your latency figures, you know, we can come over here and run Linux CNC. Again, you know, you come up with the configuration selector. We'll select Axis. Do, do you want to put a copy of the files? Yes. And OK. And it launches just like it always has. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to mention, and I think uh, this is something that uh, uh, that will be fixed. Uh, not that it's broken. Um, I'm going to close this. No, um, we'll notice that um, the uh, documentation that's installed on uh, the CNC folder um, is is different from what you're reading online. Online, all the documentation is uh, combined into a single document. Where if we compile and build, and we come over to the documents folder, I guess it's going to be empty because we created uh, 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 folders. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I went to the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, if we go to Linux CNC Dev and Docs, we'll see that um, there's the documentation PDF, but see there's the developer manual. This developer manual um, is not I mean, you'll have to go to the file system, but the integrator manual, this was originally uh, like the best wiring practices and stepper motor information, is included in the new docs uh, on the website, but for some reason it's not integrated when you compile it. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think that's something that um, they're getting ready to, uh, uh, I think that they're going to fix. So let me stop here and let me go back over to my other computer and just I got a couple closing thoughts that I want to share with you and then and then we'll move on. Okay, so to recap, we've uh, compiled the run in place. Uh, we've compiled the Deviant packages. Uh, we've showed those how to run that software. Hey, look, guys and, and girls, I, I know that this uh, I kind of rushed through this. It's a lot of information and I don't want a two hour long video uh, on how to do it. So if you're a little confused, uh, please uh, rewatch the video a couple times, download the tutorial, read it. You'll see that it's really not not too bad. Uh, most of your time is going to be spent uh, waiting for the software to compile. So uh, other than that, you know, uh, if you have questions or something, uh, feel free to uh, post down in the comment section down uh, below the video. Uh, if you're watching on the website, you can hit the contact me and uh, email me. You can email me. Uh, my email address is Xavier, X-A-V-I-E-R, at gtech.com. If you're on my YouTube channel, you can go to About, and you can get my email address there, too. Uh, like I said, um, hopefully this will help some folks. I know people want to know how to compile it. Uh, that was a lot of information to cover. And uh, if you make it uh, t and get this done, uh, give yourself a huge pat on the back because that's, uh, you, you've done a lot, and congratulations. So let me, uh, let me finish up with my closing slides here, and, and we'll, uh, we'll, end this, uh, we'll end this adventure. If you made it this far, then congratulations. Compiling the Linux CNC software wasn't as bad as you thought, I bet. Now, you can experiment with your new software and any new features it may have to offer or maybe just see if the computer is a good candidate to run the software in real time. Whatever the reason, you should pat yourself on the back. Not many people will take this step. You done well. So where to from here? Well, I'm not sure. If people have specific questions or ideas for tutorials, I'd like to produce them. I do have some other information on parallel ports that I want to share as well as a demonstration of setting up Linux CNC using the StepConf utility in a real-world example using my KRM CNC router. Take a minute, if you would, and let me know where you would like to see this to go. Either post in the comment sections below the video or feel free to email me at xavier at gtech.com. As always, Thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing. CNC is a fun and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.